In this video, traders, we are going to look at five rules for trading breakouts in Forex. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so this video is sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. There's a link to them in the description below. Scroll down, check it out. Go and see what they have to offer. Go and see how tight their spreads are. For some of the popular markets for spread trading. They've got a demo account, got a live account, free to open a demo, have a little dig around, look at their Core Trader 2 platform. Okay, so we're trading breakouts. And if we're trading breakouts in Forex specifically, there's some rules that we need to make sure that we're following to make sure we're not trying, well, we're trying to not always don't know this, but we're trying to minimize the times we get caught in the fake outs. Because we know the score, guys, very often if we try to force the breakout, that's the time the market fakes out, reverses, we take a stop, and then it maybe goes later, and it's not quite ready to go. It's got all the attributes, but it hasn't got quite the right mix. The recipe's not quite right for it to break through. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we have the attributes, the ducks are all in a row, and we've got as many things as possible on our side. Now, we can never guarantee a breakout. It'd be lovely if we could. We'd just go uh, all the margin we possibly Possibly couldn't go, this is a guaranteed breakout. Of course that's not. So we've always got to manage your risk, always got to understand this could fail, always got to have a place where we exit the trade if we're wrong. But let's have a look at some of the kind of breakout chart patterns potentially and how these rules work for regard regardless of where you're positioned on the chart. So the first one is, you know, let's imagine we've got a trend line break, very common in Forex, drive lower, trend line lower, especially on a daily chart. You've been grinding, 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 and then we get this type of move here, which is a breakout of the trend line, and it's often a reversal of a trend. Now, sometimes this might be a shorter term trend line and a bigger uptrend. Sometimes this might have been going on a while. Uh, it doesn't matter so much. We'll look at that in a moment. But the important thing is that we have you know, some breakout from a defined uh, channel, if you like, or trend line. So that's that. The second one we've got here is a classical resistance break. So in this case, we've had a couple of nudges of that high over, let's say, a multi-week, multi-month period. And now we're pushing up for another test and a breakout will be considered something that kind of went through and, and did that. Uh, the final one, guys, is something which, you know, looking at it, you might be like, well, it's not really a breakout, is it? But just imagine that this was a long-term support. So in other words, you've had plenty of trade be between that support happening and now. So it's kind of gone up and now it's curled back down. Again, very common in Forex because especially when markets are making you know, fresh territory uh, and interest rates are changing throughout the world and there's news cycles, etc. Then, you know, there's repricing very significantly often uh, the pairs. So this is like a long-term support and a breakout will be considered as something that kind of just falls straight through there and gathers momentum, etc. So let's have a look at five things that we really want to have ticked off uh, before we take any of these cover trades. So the first one is a volume increase on the break. Now, you need to see that there's volume coming in and, a, and especially a strong move. You, know, you don't want to see it just doing a normal type of move. And in addition to volume, guys, you want to see also a good extension of the day's range. So you don't want to kind of tick the point is you don't want low participation in the move. You have to see that it's punching through and it's punching through with force. It's not just stops being triggered. That is just, that's it. That's going to be the crescendo of buying or selling and it's going to kind of rotate back to where it was. Yes, you're always going to get stops regardless, but you want extra buying or extra selling to come in in addition to that to keep the drive going. Because the vulnerable part of the breakout is once the stops have all been triggered, and you've had that pulse move, that's the vulnerable part. That's when you need then buyers, if you're breaking to the upside, to step in and to keep pushing and buying higher and higher and higher. That's when you need that extra strength. So that's why volume is super important. Number two is we don't want it to be at the end of a move. Now I recognize this is subjective, you know, the end of a move, yes, if we could call it the end of a move, it would be fantastic. But I'm talking if we've had a really long run, Let's say this run has come you know, significantly lower over a kind of a three or four months, for example, and it's been relentless downtrend. You kind of feel that it's probably due a some kind of release. It's not necessarily going to stop the downtrend. You're not necessarily going to call the bottom of the downtrend. But you and I both know that markets will trend, they'll backfill, they'll chop, etc. So it's probably overdue some kind of backfill, some kind of pullback, if not some kind of consolidation. So if you're trading and looking for a breakout after it's already done 
what you consider the meat of the move, you really want to think twice about taking it because that could just be all it takes to stop it for now and to pause it. Now, I'm not to say it won't work again, you know, this is generalizing and we're just kind of looking at things uh, from a high level view here, but it could just be enough for people to go, right, I'm gonna take some profits here, I'm gonna, you know, and, and kind of count and balance off the supply demand imbalance that was there. And similarly, if you were kind of using these on a, on a more short-term basis, a 15, 15 minute chart, et cetera, you don't want kind of four or five trends lower and then to be looking for the break. You know, that's a little bit late in the move. Um, and just to me, it just it reduces the odds of it working. So again, subjective to what is the end of a move, because of course, you know, it can carry on for another two years. That's the way Forex works, right? It can be huge trends, but often you might get a little bit of a failure and a little bit of a fake out, and more often you get that when it's a little bit more stretched. Number three, guys, a news driver is better. Um, this is a key one for me. If there's a catalyst, a fundamental catalyst that's changing the potential valuation of that nation's currency, that's really good. You know, if you have something like a surprise interest rate uh, cut or surprise interest rate hike or some economic data that's um, very strong or very weak, that adds, adds extra weight because what that's doing is that's bringing in uh, people who are surprised, additional money who then are not really price sensitive, they're more time sensitive, like I want to get in, I want to get in, or I want to get out on the other way, depending on where you're looking at it. And so that tends to mean that people are less bothered about looking at all these levels and technical stuff. They just need the position on or off. So they're not price sensitive, they're time sensitive. In other words, I need it done this week. We've got a lot of, got a lot of money to do, we've got a lot of risk, a lot of hedging to do, whatever it may be. And so when you have the catalyst, everybody's having that same information immediately. Yes, I know the microseconds are different, but you know, theoretically, reasonably at the same level. And so, you know, there's a lot of money flow that has to happen after that trigger point. So a catalyst is a really, really good thing to have. You know, if you could pick any of them, that would probably be the, the primary one. Um, uh, any retest should be quick. So what I mean by this, very often, uh, as you'll know, if you've been trading uh, for any period of time when you're trading breakouts, very often you get a retest. Now what you don't, and that's normal, that's gonna happen. You know, obviously it's nice if you're in a breakout to see it just ripping on and on and on, but this is, Forex trading guys, and you know that because we're trading a pair very often, it's not just a one-sided street. So often we do get a retest, but that shouldn't be lengthy. It shouldn't be hanging around there. It shouldn't be knocking on that door too often. It should come back, have a little sniff, not like the smell of that, and then just run on, if that makes sense. So we push up, we want to come back down very quickly into a day, something like that, maybe even get a wick on a chart and then push on. You don't want it to sit there for two days and be happy at that level because that's not really indicating you know, momentum. It's more indicating you know, just sort of a look above, not that happy. Now, not to say buyers can't step in after a few days, of course they can, but if you're trying to use a filter to find better quality breakouts, then you know that would be something to add in, in my view. Um, so we've got the fifth one, guys, is a higher time frame trend on your side. Slight caveat, that does depend on what you're doing, but I think it's always a good thing to be with the trend. You know, have the weight of the trend behind you. So if you've got a catalyst, a good news catalyst, you're already in uptrend, that's fine. Now, some of you are gonna be saying, well, what about this kind of thing? Yes, but we can also be in a scenario where, you know, we've got a broader uptrend and we've got a kind of shorter downtrend channel. So you have got the larger trend behind you, which is what you're looking for. In this case scenario here, you may have got the trend behind you. Here, hopefully you've got the trend behind you. But again, being cautious to be aware that you're not at the end of the move or what you perceive as maybe the move's a little bit stretched. So it's nice to have the higher time frame wind behind your back. It's nice to have these happening, you know, when you've got all, you know, because in the, the day, guys, the, you know, when the tide is rising, all ships are being lifted. So, you know, if you're slightly wrong with your breakout, you're a little bit, a little bit late, a little bit early, you know, you're relying on that, uh, that trend, that stronger trend to kind of push you through. And that, that always helps rather than hinders, generally speaking. You know, if you've got that trend and if you've got that environment of a kind of bullish underlying sentiment and you're coming up to that resistance, then that can only be a good thing. Now, very often markets are sitting in a range, are uh, very often there, uh, you know, especially currency markets have been sitting in a range for multiple years, um, you know, you have to define the trend as to what suits you. Now, if it's, you know, the last quarter has been a good uptrend, then, then that's, that's good. If the last year has been an uptrend, even better. You know, you can define it and kind of see uh, what's going on. If they're all in line, it's all very nice, and you come out to resistance, and you just start it as a catalyst, you're probably ticking a lot of boxes. So anyway, guys, those are my five rules for trading breakouts. 
in Forex. And like I say, this video is sponsored by Core Spreads Australia. There's a link to them in the description below. Scroll down, open it up, have a look, and go and see the kind of spreads that they offer on some of your favorite Forex pairs. Take care, bye-bye.